Welcome to the April 2023 Kempton Arms Fair. In this video, we're going to have a look around. We're going to talk to some people and see what sort of treasures they found. And we'll have a general look at the sort of stuff that is on offer. So we've been lucky enough to be given um, early access. So we can come in while the traders are still setting up and uh, have a look around before it gets busy when the public comes in at nine o'clock. So at Kempton Park they sell a wide range of air guns and also uh, an interesting selection of antique weapons. So these include swords, muskets, flintlock rifles, little flintlock pistols, all kinds of stuff. And a lot of these can be owned as curios. They also sell uh, deactivated military weapons and associated militaria. So when it comes to air guns, someone whose table you definitely have to go and see is Tim Dyson. He always has very nice stuff and um, on this particular occasion he's got a very rare BSA military pattern and also a big selection of really nice pistols. So I'm just going to pick out a few of my favourites. So one thing that jumps out to me is a very nice Ackles and Shalvoke Warrior designed by Frank Clark. It's a side lever concentric cylinder pre-war pistol. Really nice actually. Uh, this one's in 177. Uh, I did have a 221 but I got rid of it and I would like one in 177 and this one is particularly nice. Uh, also he's got a Diana Model 5 but this is the fairground version so it was set up to be shot in the fairground gallery it's got a little attachment point on the barrel so you can chain it to the table so people don't run off with it that's quite interesting and um, so you got it's also got a FLZ gallery pistol which is made by Frederick Langenham in Zellamelis this is probably a fairground gun as well I believe um, yeah that's a really nice example of one of the last type of gallery pistols and what else has he got uh, ooh, a wood grip model 5 that's really nice only made for a short period uh, that will go nicely with my wood grip model 6 and that, again in very nice condition and yeah a Stiga which is a plastic gripped I think it's Russian or Czech a version like a copy of the Zenit so they're very rare actually and um, again in very nice condition and he's also got a Kynox Swift some Dyson here demonstrating a kind of swift closure. Fantastic. Yep, never seen one of those in the flesh. I did cock that. Magic. Quite, yeah, quite rare. Yeah, lovely. Thanks, Tim. No problem. Yeah, there's lots of really interesting stuff. There was a original 1912 Votes for Women flag, which I thought was, was really nice. And, um, most of these antique gun display tables are really really gorgeous they've got some amazing stuff well worth a look over on laurie armatruder's table he's got a couple of giffards these are beautiful things they're the oldest type of co2 gun uh, made in the late 1800s i'd love one of these they're absolutely beautiful Laurie is a real expert when it comes to CO2 guns and um, yeah we'll come back and have a little chat with him later. So all the traders have set up all their tables, they've got all their displays nicely laid out and now it's time to open the doors and let the public in. It's actually very exciting to attend as a, as a customer. Once you get inside, the atmosphere is, is, is very electric. There's a lot of hubbub and um, yeah, it's a great place to be. So I gave people a while and then tracked down a few people I knew to see what they'd found. So I'm here with John Maluski again and uh, he's found something very interesting. What have you got, John? Hello, Matt. Right, I found something that I've been after since the mid 90s. Who remembers one of these? It's the Venom TDR. The reason I was after it is because I have to walk about two miles each way to my local club and I don't really want to do it with a rucksack, uh, sorry, with a gun bag over my shoulder. A rucksack's far more discreet. This thing, um, the idea is, it's a Webby XL, sawn off stock, folding butt plate, folding stock, folding butt plate as well. And this one 
It comes with three barrels. Fantastic. Is that the uh, original bag, we think? I've no idea, but there are three compartments for I think three barrels in there, so it may well be. It fits. The, the idea is a scope goes goes on here as well, yep. and there's room in the bag for the for the gun and the scope. Plus the three barrels, so very compact. Okay. Um, we've got 177, 22, and the previous owner obviously like it's 25. That's the one he placed the silencer on. So the way this works is the barrel fits in here, okay. just the same as it does on a Webley Hawk. Tighten up the middle screws, and you now have a full size rifle down the bar. Fantastic! Absolutely ideal. So, how long have you wanted one of those for? Well, mid 90s is when they first came out. Couldn't buy one at the time, nobody had them. Yeah. And I'd almost given up of ever seeing one, never mind having, having a chance to buy one. So, chuff to beast, this, this show is just the sort of place to find one. Uh, Can you close the barrel? Just so we get to see what it looks. Yeah. There we go. Fantastic. There we go. All we need now is a sight. Perfect. Cheers, cheers, John. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, mate. Very good. Okay, I've been told by John Maluski to check this out. What have we got here, please, sir? It's a. Is it a PCP? It's a PCP converted? air rifle made to look like a Mark and number four. So is it? A, was it a real number four that's been made to look like? A... No, I think parts of it are and parts of it are um, not. So the furniture, the woodwork is from a. a yeah. Okay. How does it work? Magazine goes in there. Yeah. Ten shot. Pull that back. Like that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't want to go back at the moment. Okay. It, it's got no air. Right. Only comes back like that. Like that. And was There's it... a rotary magazine drum in there. Yeah. And it fires on. So is it? Um... There it is. A filling port. Yeah. And there was a valve, some uh, gauge. That, yeah, there's a gauge. There's there. the gauge. Fantastic. Is it? A con is it an existing air gun that's been? Adapted, I'm not sure. Apparently, a gun maker made three of them. Yeah. He's died. Yeah. They came from his widow. Okay. I know nothing else about. Them. Fascinating. Right, thank you very much. My pleasure. Cheers, mate. And there's an, there is a short magazine, Lee Enfield one that he's made. That's right. Yeah. I can't do that because it's full up with air. Okay. Same, the same thing. sort of thing. Yeah. Magazine goes in there. Yeah. Bolt acts in there. Yeah. Hang on. Hello, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, they've got some. Probably some woodwork off the smelly. Yeah. They've got a not, uh, PCP air rifle. And it's got the sights, uh, kind of an airfield sights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. All right. Thanks, mate. My pleasure. Cheers. So I've come back to Laurie Armatruder's table. He's the king of the CO2s because he's got something very interesting to show me. So I'm here with Laurie Armatruder again and we've got a gas powered. Conversion L to a LP53. Here we are. I'll do it quickly to show you how it works. So, have you done this conversion? This is one that was done by John Walker, but I do do this. I've conversion. heard of these and they sound fascinating. So, does it take a 12 grand? Yeah, it's not. There we are. And there's the actual. Oh, fantastic. So, that's the valve, is it? That's the valve. Yeah. It's using a, a threaded power lip, okay. which makes it much easier. Yeah. But once it's been converted, you yeah. can't convert it back to a, a yeah. spring pistol. Yeah. It's, it's there for good. So does the existing trigger mechanism oh, yeah. operate that? Is Every, that it? Everything still works the same, but the, the piston yeah. has been machined to uh, accept the uh, power. Yeah. That's amazing. And what sort of power do these end up putting yeah. there? Probably about four and a half foot power. That's pretty good, isn't yeah, it? It is. Oh. Yeah, very good. Fantastic. How much are these going for? <laughs> well, because it's a, quite a lot of work involved, they go for about 450 pounds. That's understandable. Yeah, yeah. no, fantastic. Because they're amazing. Like the, the barrels would be brilliant, won't they? The yeah, the they've got really nice barrels. I didn't realise it was that straightforward. So it's literally taking the spring mechanism out and fitting that yeah, unit got, to it. This is a tricky part. Just getting this into the right position to be able to um, close it again. It's just a matter of lining up that 
That's it. And then you just put the front bit on. Put that on. And how many shots do you reckon you get out of this? Get about 35 or 40 shots out of them. Man, that's fantastic. There's not many of those about as well, I've heard of them. No. I, I do my own conversion of this now. It's Is about a bit simpler? Slightly simpler, yeah. yeah. You don't have to. You just go like that and cock it. Right? Is that what sets the valve then? Yeah, that's it. So you don't have to yeah, yeah, yeah. use too much. I will fire it, but I know I shouldn't do it. Hey. Cheers, Laurie. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Laurie. I love that, folks. There are also usually some stalls outside, and today they've got some selling deactivated weapons and militaria. <laughs> There's also a really nice table of vintage air guns and they seem to have quite a lot of junior rifles. Really nice condition as well. They also had a little selection of vintage air pistols which interestingly included a Titan and a Frank Clark Britain which you don't see very often. Also a selection of pellets. Now pellets are collectible in their own right and a lot of people enjoy collecting pellets. So here my mate Dario, what would you get Dario? A few pellet boxes as usual. So Dario collects pellets, pellet tins. Nice. Any of those super rare? Uh, not really, not seen too many I've of those. I've never seen those before, what are they? I've seen them a couple of times, they're quite... Um... Are they English? Uh, no, they're uh, American pellets. Okay. Uh, I don't see them very often, but yeah, I picked it up for the right price. Lovely. Uh, and a box I've not seen before. Oh, what's that? It's a German. Spezialkugeln mm -hmm. for Diana Luftpistol. Oh, right. So they're, are they Diana branded, you think? Uh, they must be affiliated or something. Must be affiliated. I will look into that. There is one pellet in the box. One so, pellet, there you go. Yeah. Do for your research. Okay. Is that your lot? Uh, no, I've got a few more. Mm -hmm. There is a few more. You can stick them on here. Oh, we could have stuck them on that little. So, I've got a little Webley. Yeah. Everyone loves a Webley. Uh, a little... Oh, yeah, you've got to love a wasp. A Ooh, wiper. Yeah, I know that. And I've got a few blinking pellets as well. Oh, just for general use? Yeah, some of the old uh, air, arms. air arms and... Uh, never seen Rabbit Magnum. Ne never seen those ones and the 177 as well, so I'll give them a go. Excellent. And that's about it. Not a bad haul for today then. Happy? Oh, not bad, yeah, very happy. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Cheers, mate. After we spoke to him, Dario also picked up a very rare Witten pellet box, which he'd been after for quite a while along with some other bits, and also his copy of the second edition of the Encyclopedia of Spring Air Pistols by John Griffiths, which is fantastic. Finally, we come to Peter Binfield's table. He's the organiser of the Kempton Arms Fair, and he had some lovely stuff, including a Mark II Webley Target. Uh, I'd love one of these. This is basically a Target version of the Mark I Air Pistol. So I think it's got twin phosphor bronze rings instead of a leather piston seal and uh, it's got a better trigger and uh, this comes in an original leather uh, army and navy store case which is absolutely gorgeous. Now cases are very desirable as a collector and there are a few different versions of Webley pistol cases including this one. So Rexy Webley pistol case, yeah. original, original oil can. Yeah, it's a reversible sprout, the rarest one out of the lot as Fantastic. well. Fantastic. Cheers, John. Beautiful. So, this is Peter, Peter Binfield. He uh, runs the, organ uh, the whole uh, event. Well, the trouble's over there, but I help, yeah. Okay, all right. How are you today? You all right? <laughs> yeah, good. You're a little bit tired. Yeah, I bet. Um, Four o'clock start in the morning. Yeah, so uh, we're about halfway through the day, do you reckon? Yeah, about halfway through. Yeah, yeah. it's quite busy, isn't it? It's been busy, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's busier than the last time I was here. I, I think. think it is, yeah. yeah. Probably one of our busiest, but they've had three months to save up, so yeah. yeah okay, a lot of purchases yeah, yeah. gone on. You, you've sold quite a few from your table. Uh, one or two, one or two have gone, yeah. yeah. We're lucky enough to purchase a Webley Sprinkler pistol. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
You don't see them very often. I think they're about, Let's they're go about to 600 of them made, something like okay. that. Okay, right. I think. Yeah, yeah, all right. I don't know. Yeah. So I can have a look. Yeah. Probably never going to get to see another one. So it's got the two spring clips on the top. Two spring clips either side. Is that the only thing that's different then, really? Uh, uh, more or less, otherwise it's a Mark One. But this one's come with two barrels, which you don't normally see with two barrels. Okay, so, so you've yeah. got a 177 and a 2.2? 177 and a 2.2, yeah. Okay, fantastic. How, how long has the, the um, fair been going on? Uh, this is our fifth year. Fifth year, yeah? Okay. Did you um, instigate it? At the beginning, I or? did really with the uh, failure of Bosley, yeah, and then pressure from collectors oh. on the fair, on the race course. So yeah, that's yeah. Um, fantastic. It's been a, it's, yeah. it's always thoroughly looked forward to by all the it collectors. Is, and where we're lucky is um, our September fair we do for charity, yeah, and we've managed to raise fifteen thousand for cancer charities. Fantastic in five years, yeah, and two thousand for Ukraine. So. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah, we're, we're proud of that, and it's all the shooters and collectors here that support. Charity, so yeah, fantastic. We just do the donkey work and they cop up. All right, well, thanks very much for all the effort because it's a, it's a huge effort every time, and we You're all welcome. appreciate it and uh, and we thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, all right, thanks the a bit lot. I like more than anything else is yeah. Guinness at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'll drink to that. All right, Thank you. cheers, PR. Yeah. Bye, Thank mate. You. Bye, bye. bye. A couple of other items of interest that were floating around included a Giffard pump up pistol, which is very rare, and also an Anston Star, which is also very rare. These weren't for sale, but they were being shown around for valuation purposes. Uh, it was also a very nice ball reservoir gun and a very terrifying moment where a customer put his cup of tea right next to it. Yeah, not ideal. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm just going to leave you now with some images of some of the other things that were up for sale at the April 2023 Kempton Arms Fair. These are on roughly every three months so I'm really looking forward to the next one already. Alright, thanks a lot. Bye!